Welcome back for the second part of One Man's Faith. Again, my name is Neil Owen. Glad to have you with me tonight. And we were looking at the first section on some of the information that is contained here in Genesis. Some of this we just overlook because we have a hard time. Why did they give us and Canaan begot such and such and blah, blah, you know, and, and Mahalalel begot and, and Jared begot and Enoch begot. You know, why did God go through that and tell us how long they lived? Well, I'm trying, I want to show you that. That's what I'm trying to show you. And so we're, we're going to go back to this slide again. And as you can see, Lamech knew Adam. As a matter of fact, I'm going to drop another slide here on this. And I want you to see. That Lamech was 56 when Adam died. He was 111 when Seth died. Lamech was 113 when Enoch died. And Enoch is the one that only lived 365 years and walked with God. Now, in Noah's timeline, Noah was 84 when Enoch died. He was 179 when Kenan, he was 234 when Mahalalel, he was 336 when Enoch died. Now look at this. Look at this. Methuselah died 969 years later. He was the, he, he was the man that lived the longest, but he died during the year of the flood. That's what I think is neat. Noah knew his ancestors. It wasn't just that he was here, it was hearsay. He, his father was living, had lived for 56 years when Adam died. Wow. And, you know, I've always wondered, how did Noah build the ark? You know, that took a lot of wood. God said, build it out of wood. And use pitch and you know and cover it over inside and out. What Noah built was a big box. That's what the word ark means. Box. It was 450 feet long. It was 75 feet wide, and it was 45 feet tall. It had three levels, and it was packed with animals and his family. The flood started when the last righteous man, the last man that knew God, died. The same year that Methuselah died, the flood started. Isn't that neat? That's just great. And so Noah was able to carry on the lineage. Now there's something else I want you to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, um, to put up one more slide here. So let's go back to our slides. I want you to now this is Cain. This is Cain's family. We don't see much of this. But what I want you to see is that Cain had had a Lamech who had three brothers and a sister. And Tubal Cain forged bronze and iron implements. See, we don't think about this. We think that they were like cavemen walking around with sticks hitting each other over the head. But no. Cain had, a, had an, uh, a sibling or a grand, 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 a great, 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 great grandson who forged implements or tools of bronze and iron. Therefore, it's very possible that Noah had tools and instruments to be able to cut wood. He may not have had an electric buzzsaw, but just a just a you know just a handsaw. He he possibly had. See, we don't think about that. Think about this. When I was in college. Chad, don't laugh. But when I was in college, my calculator 
was a stick about this long called a slide rule. Hey, quit laughing in there. A slide rule. I, I wish I had one to show you, but that was our calculator. The little centerpiece moved in and out, and it had a slide across it with a, with a line in it, and, and we would add, or well not add, subtract, we would multiply, divide, take square roots, square things, um, find sine, cosine, all these things were, were, were found on this slide rule when I was in college because there weren't many calculators. The first calculator I used had tubes in it that had the numbers in it, and it was about this big. It weighed about 40 pounds. That was in 1969 and 70. My first computer was a TRS-80, a Radio Shack, TRS-80 color computer. It had a whopping 16 kilobytes of memory. That sucker could fly at about, I think, 100 megahertz. And look where we are now. I've got a kajillion of those on this phone, along with a calculator that can do everything that my slide rule did. Now listen, that's since 1960. That's only been 40 years. Think about it, guys. These people lived 900 years. How much more, if I can say this, how much more trouble could they get into than us? See, we don't, we don't, we don't, that, we don't think about that. But what if we live 900 years now? Wow, the things that we could have accomplished. The things that we could have accomplished. It's just, it's just, it's interesting to me. And all this I'm finding just by reading the word here. There's something else that a lot of people um, mistake. And that, um, that is God spoke to Noah. And if you remember, the world was, if I can say it, excuse my French, but the world was going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, everything was wrong. Every intent and thoughts of a man's heart were only evil. Chapter 6 tells us. And it says the Lord was sorry. And the Lord goes on and he tells, um, uh, he tells Noah, he said, he said he, he, um, that he will not contend with man for any longer I was trying to find the exact, the, the exact, exact scripture. Uh, oh, here it is. In chapter 6, verse 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he is flesh. Nevertheless, his day shall be 120 years. And we all look at that and say, Well, God limited man's time to 120 years. That's not what he's saying. See, Noah lived over 800 years. So he couldn't be saying that. Shem lived 600 years. Abraham, going out that far, lived 175 years. So what God is saying here, he's speaking to Noah, and he's saying, Noah, listen, I'm not going to strive with man, but for another 120 years. In other words, in 120 years from that point, I'm going to do away with man. And that's what chapter 6, verse 3 is saying. He's not saying he's limiting man to a 120-year to a time span. He's saying that from the time that he talked to Noah then, it would be 120 years until mankind was done away with through the flood. Okay? Those are just some of the interesting things you will find by looking at the Word of God. It is... It is just fascinating. How long did Noah stay on the ark? 40 days, 40 nights. No, that's how long it rained. Noah stayed on the ark, now listen to this, with all these animals, 375 
days. Can you imagine staying cooped up in this big box with all these animals for that period of time? But that's what happened. If you'll read, it says that the flood, um, uh, flood started in the 600th year in the second month on the 17th day. And then in chapter 8, it says that uh, it came about in the 601st year on the first month, uh, no, oh, in the second month on the 27th day, the earth was dry. So 375 days, Noah and those animals stayed on that ark before they could get off, before it was dry enough for them to get off. And they were up on a mountain. <laughs> you can just find some interesting things. God does some great things. And we looked at that um, during our last, um, uh, our last four-week uh, series. We looked at the love of God and how much God loved us and how he made us. And it just continues on. As you'll see, as he finds Abram, and he brings him to Canaan and he says, listen, this is going to be your land. And your descendants will populate this. This is going to be yours. I am giving this land to you, which became the land of Israel. God gave it to them. And he never took it away. And so get into the word. Get into the word of God. We're going to see a lot of really neat things in this word. You'll love it if you get into it. Don't worry about don't worry about coming across things that don't make sense. One of two things will happen. You can say, Father, what does this mean? Will you show me? And he will, or you will have to wait because it's not time for you to understand what that means. There are many things in here I don't understand. But I just I say, wow. That's interesting. You know, why did he do that? But later on, and I'll say, God, what does, what does this mean? And later on, he'll show me. And that's what God will do for you. If you will, if you will let him. And a lot of times I'll even write notes. I'll say, why? What does this mean? You know? And, and later on, I'll come back and I'll have an answer. Not from going out into anything and, and looking in a textbook or whatever. I either find it later on in the Word of God or it's illuminated to me. And that's what God will do for you. If you will let Him, He will illuminate things for you. His Word is alive. It's living. It's active. Hebrews tells us. And He wants to show things to you. He wants to show things to you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And while we're gone, get your Bible, turn to Hosea. We're going to go there for a while, okay? We'll be back in just a minute.